It's a big week for tech earnings uh, next week, including reports from Alphabet, Microsoft, Meta, uh, and Amazon. Join us now with what to expect is Gunjen Banerjee, markets reporter at, Wall, at the Wall Street Journal uh, and a CNBC contributor. I, I want to, how are you? It's good to see you, uh, Gunjen. But in terms of what this means for the overall market, I think what we've seen lately just in, in the S&P this week is interesting because uh, it, it almost looks like it's, I don't know, stalling out a little bit, like whatever we saw that bounce from October doesn't look like it doesn't look like it's necessarily going to get through these resistance levels. Could tech do it? Could te if, it's, if it's not so bad next week, would that be the impetus for starting uh, another leg up? Joe, it's been remarkably, remarkably quiet out there. But I think people are looking at that broader index level and looking at these 0.1% moves up and down in the major indexes are kind of missing the picture because Underneath, we are seeing these huge moves um, for some of these mega caps this week. You know, just Tesla's move yesterday down almost 10 percent. Netflix's move after its earnings this week. So that's kind of a warning sign going into this really, really important earnings week we have next week with a bunch of those mega cap tech stocks reporting earnings. And, you know, zooming out, I think analysts are not expecting a great season. Um, analysts are, are expecting profits for information technology companies within the S&P 500 to fall around 15 percent for this quarter. That's more than double the decline for the S&P 500, and it would be the worst quarterly decline since 2009. Um, now I'm hearing Gunjen talking about 2024. In fact, someone last night said, you know, the election's only 18 months away, and I was like, what, which election? I go, oh, my God, is that true? Mm -hmm. So the next earnings, the next year of comparisons is not that far away now. And we're, what, what, are we, what are we deciding about 2023? This is going to be the, uh, the low point. It's going to be flat. And then what do we know about 2024? Is there a resumption of, of better growth, do you think? As, as you just said, I think 2024 just seems so far out right now. You know, so many investors already thought that we would be in a recession right now in the second quarter of 2023. And clearly that keeps getting pushed further and further out. But zooming out, it does seem like investors are expecting the worst of this earnings decline, of this trough for earnings to kind of pass after this quarter. Um, and that means, you know, what executives are saying the next few days, the next few weeks is really important. What are they saying about cost cutting? What are they saying about profits? You know, we had a number of companies just this week talk about layoffs. Um, what are these companies saying about that? And so I think investors are going to be really, really focused on, you know, clues that they can get about the broader economy. Um, but yes, I think in terms of the market, when you look at how much stocks have rallied this year, particularly tech stocks, it looks like a lot of investors are saying, hey, we think the worst may be behind us pretty soon. And, and the next few weeks are going to determine whether or not that's true. And the, the macro picture. I mean, the housing sales, awful. Uh, what did we say? How many tech, how many Fed guys talked yesterday? So we don't, we still are trying to figure out whether there's more, whether it's 25, whether it's another 50. Then we don't know what the credit contraction is uh, from the recent uh, tumult in, in, the, in the regional banks and in, in the financial sector. We don't, and we don't, do consumers have anything left? I, sometimes I hear that, that, you know, American Express says everything's fine, but then you hear about all the trading down to the low end and they've run out of, there's, out of stimulus money. But it just seems like there's so many variables to try to figure things. There always are, uh, obviously, Gunjen. But what are the most important uh, factors, do you think? I think the Fed is still looming large. I think consumers still have a lot of money to spend. We've seen that from some of the travel results recently. And just when you look around, you know, you look around at restaurants, at, at, in airports, they're packed right now. But a lot of investors are still expecting one more rate hike and then for the Fed to be done. Um, but that's in contrast with what the Fed has said. So I think any, any developments on that front um, could hurt particularly tech the next few weeks and months because investors have piled back into the sector expecting rate cuts, expecting a slowdown in rate hikes. Um, so any language around that changing uh, would ding those stocks. And we are seeing the Nasdaq underperform just slightly this week, um, thanks in part, of course, to, to the stocks like Tesla. 
Okay. All right. Uh, good Jen. Happy Friday. Thank you. Uh, anything going on? Concerts or anything that, that you got planned? Or <laughs> you got, you, got you, you have Taylor Swift tickets yet? I didn't land those Taylor Swift tickets. No. All right. Might not be. Uh, are you a Swifty? <laughs> I admitted to being a Swifty. I'm not a huge Swifty, actually. Uh, okay. <laughs> We are here, I think. Yeah, I think we're Swifties. Yeah. I like her. I haven't been to any concerts, but I like her. I've not been to a concert. I'm a fan of I'm a fan of uh, Taylor Swift, the entrepreneur. Well, and also and the uh, music. music and the music. If you tried to write us, th Gunjan, thank you. We'll let you go.